Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. From one fiasco to another, Washington has failed to change the regime in Syria, failed to effectively fight ISIL, and now wants Russia to fail. At the same time, Obama appears to be willing to arm any anti-regime fighter who can carry a gun. What could possibly go wrong with that? To crosstalk Russia's counterterrorism efforts in Syria, I'm joined by my guest, Marcus Papadopoulos in London. He is the editor of Politics First magazine. Also in London, we have Roshan Mohammed Sali. He is a journalist and documentary filmmaker with Press TV. And in Los Angeles, we cross to Philippe Asoulin. He is an international relations expert. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules. In effect, that means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage it. Uh, Philippe, if I can go to you in Los Angeles, you got up very early to come to this program, and it's much appreciated. Uh, I suppose now I understand the term fog of war because all of a sudden, all of a sudden the administration is talking about moderates and moderates and moderates and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to train them in Syria. I thought we saw that film and it was a bad one. Now we're moving on to part two. What's your take? Well, first of all, when you said fog of war, I thought you were referring to my early wake-up. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I have to agree with much of the introduction. The Americans do not seem to have a well-thought-out strategy. Uh, we've seen it in Libya. Uh, right now, there doesn't seem to be any serious engagement, any long-term planning. However, my question, given that, given that the Americans don't have any serious presence, given that they've been arming groups that will likely turn on them, like al-Nusra, what is the Russian endgame? Russia seems to want to return to the status before the Arab Spring. That means reinstating Assad's full control over the whole country. That is not going to be accepted lightly by the Sunnis. That's number one. And number two, in the region, the empowerment of the Shiite side through Russian assistance is going to cause instability in other countries. Yep. So yep. my concern is, are the Russians there just yeah. to solidify their interest in the short term, or do they have a plan longer yeah. term? I, I, I think that's a very, very good question. If I can say a few words and then I'll go to Marcos here. Uh, number one, I think in, in dealing with Assad, uh, the Russians have been able to bring him to the table twice uh, in Geneva over the last few years, and there was no one there to sit down. So uh, it's very clear that the Russian side has talked about a political transition in Syria. Syria to wind down this civil war. So on that point there, number two, uh, of course there are risks involved in this here. And I think that from what Russia's perspective is, is to preserve the sovereignty of Syria and then go from there. And then we'll see what actors, legitimate actors, are there to talk to. Uh, Marcus, do you agree or disagree with me? And maybe you want to react to Philippe's questions. Go ahead. I, I, I agree with what you said, Peter. You know, Russia, Russia is acting in Syria to, number one, uh, defend its national security because ISIS and Islamism in general poses a significant threat uh, to the Russian Federation. And secondly, Russia is acting in Syria to defend the legitimate government of the country. And I think it's a very, very uh, misleading uh, way for commentators around the world to keep on referring to the Syrian regime, to Assad soldiers. No, yeah. the Syrian government, the Syrian army, President <clears throat> Assad. It, these are the legitimate people in Syria in accordance with international law. So Russia is acting because of out of uh, national security interests and also um, to ensure that the legitimate government in a country, in a very strategic area, a very geostrategic area, um, does not collapse. Because if Syria collapses, if the Syrian government uh, state collapses, um, then the, threat, the current threat from ISIS um, will, be increased, uh, yep. will be increased tenfold. And I don't say this in a melodramatic way, but quite frankly, the world should thank God for the Syrian army, because the Syrian army is the heart and soul in the fight against ISIS and other Islamist groups. And also, the world should thank God for the Russian military strikes, because the Russian military strikes against ISIS and other Islamist groups in Syria are enabling the Syrian army uh, to advance slowly in liberating 
areas of Syria which have been under the control of ISIS and other Islamist groups. And, and, and Roshan, I, I noticed that you wanted to jump in there, and I'd like to also point out here, not to be yeah. a cheerleader or anything like that, but I mean, after 10 days or so of bombing, significant inroads in, in eroding the, the infrastructure of ISIL. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the U.S., I mean, I've heard numbers from 20,000 to 60,000 sorties over the last year uh, violating Syria's airspace illegally every single time hasn't had much success here. So do you want to kind of take one thread that you've heard already heard on this program? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to react to, but I mean, uh, one of your guests said, uh, does Russia want to go back to the pre-Arab spring status quo? I mean, I've always opposed dictatorship throughout my life and my political career, my journalistic career, but I would go back to the pre-Arab swing status quo in a heartbeat, uh, because all we've got now is war, sectarianism, everyone at each other's throats, uh, and I would prefer you know, unsatisfactory dictatorship over that any day. Um, what we need is a political solution. I'm not, an, I'm not an advocate of foreign intervention in any country, but realistically, if people are going to call for Russia to pull out, they also have to call for Saudi Arabia to pull out. They also have to call for America to pull out, for Turkey right. to pull out. Either one pulls out, or either all of them pull out, or no one pulls out. Now, if the Russian intervention leads to the negotiating table, and that is the stated Russian aim, that everyone can negotiate a way out of this horrible conflict, then it would have been proved to be a success. If it leads to a greater escalation, then it would have been proved to be a failure. Now, the, the, the jury's out on that, but what it does seem like at the moment is in one or two weeks, Russia seems to really be taking on ISIS. It re seems to be really taking on the so-called moderate rebels, other groups like uh, Jabhat al-Nusra, uh, and, you know, uh, the Americans have, and the British have been doing that for one year without much success whatsoever. Yeah, Philippe, I mean, a cynic would say, considering what's coming yeah. out of the, but specifically what's coming out of the uh, uh, Defense Department, uh, Ash, uh, Ashton Carter, I mean, I call, my uh, nickname for him now is Loose Rhetoric, because he, he would, he, it's better for him to keep his mouth shut, because the more he runs his mouth, the more he makes it sound like the United States is going to align itself with Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda-like elements in Syria, protecting, quote-unquote, their moderates. How do you react to that? Um, I'd like to take issue with something that was said before uh, uh, getting directly to your question. Calling Assad the legitimate government of Syria is a very big problem that is going to present a problem for the Russians long term. Barrel bombing your population, starving refugee camps, and killing or displacing millions of people does not make a dictator legitimate. And to come to a political solution, you have to have a realistic expectation. The Sunnis are not going to accept a Shiite puppet, Iran's puppet in place, because of everything going on in the Middle East. Now, the American method of, it seems, arming al-Qaeda affiliated groups and local nationalists so that they can bleed the Soviet, uh, sorry, the Russians, that was quite a, a slip there, so that they can maybe test Russian new weapons, uh, new tactics, is something that's going to turn around and, and backfire on the Americans and the region. I agree with you there. But to suppose that Russia can bomb its way back to some peaceful, uh, even pre-Arab uh, spring state is very questionable. I don't see any horizon where the Sunnis of the Middle East, including the ones in Syria, are going to accept Assad staying or any Shiite puppet. Okay. And I have two gentlemen in London disagreeing with yeah. you, at least by their gestures. Um, Marcos, go first, okay, real quick, and I, then we'll I, go to... I, I, no, I, let me go to Marcos first. I, I, go, I ahead. go ahead. I, complete, I completely disagree with that. Most Syrians support uh, the Syrian government and President Assad, either actively or passively. And I think it's very, very misleading and dangerous uh, for people to subscribe to this notion uh, that President Assad, uh, his government and the Syrian army, they are anti-Sunni. That is absolute nonsense. Look, President Assad's wife is a Sunni. Most of the Syrian high command are Sunnis. If, if most Sunnis in, uh, in Syria loathed the Syrian government, loathed, loathed the Syrian armed forces, then it, the Syrian state would have collapsed years ago. I think that's a, ver that's a very misleading and a dangerous way to approach this. The reality is this, that President Assad, is the, President Assad is the legitimate leader of Syria. I loathe the Saudi uh, establishment. I loathe the Saudi royal family. 
but I would never seek for a war to be uh, put out against them. I would never seek for them to be undermined because they are the legitimate leaders yes. of, of Saudi Arabia in accordance with the UN Charter and international law. President Assad is the legitimate leader okay, gentlemen, of Syria, not, well, like okay. it or not. Uh, and, and he is, and we, we're not going to get around that, okay? Um, let me go to Russia and, and, and London. Please do jump in. I don't in. think he is. Well, he is, and, yeah, and that's I, the I only just, part that we like have there. when people... Go ahead, go ahead. What Jump makes him legitimate? No, no, no. The whole Russian Russian word Come on, wait, let's equal time, everybody. Uh, we can disagree all we want, but equal time. Roshan, go ahead. In London. Yeah, I just don't like it when people see uh, the whole Middle East through this simplistic Sunni Shia lens. Uh, everyone tends to do it, and you know, I, I really think it's just oversimplistic and, and quite comical at times. You know, the Syrian Arab army is majority Sunni. That is a fact. You know, and so if, if the Syrian Arab army is majority Sunni, then it isn't Shias killing Sunnis or Alawites killing Sunnis. It's Sunnis killing Sunnis. So it's an absolutely ridiculous proposition. The fact is that Syria is divided. No one speaks for the Syrian people uh, in their majority, but I think that um, it's pretty obvious now that President Assad is the most popular single leader um, in Syria. And the, you know, even the people that don't like him prefer him over ISIS and Jabhat al-Nusra. And at the moment, this comes down to a straight battle between Assad. Who do you prefer, Assad or Jabhat al-Nusra, which is al-Qaeda in Syria, or ISIS? Because if Assad falls, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a terrorist state, and you know, the moderate right. rebels aren't going to take over. You know, liberal human rights activists in the West should should you know wake up and smell the coffee. It's going to be terrorist groups like Jabhat al-Nusra and ISIS. Okay, and gentlemen. Burn gentlemen, the whole let, me, let, me go, the whole let me go to Philippe. Give him the last word before we go to the break. Philippe, who is America's number one enemy in this civil war? Real quickly, go ahead. The answer is yes. I think both sides pose a problem. But to keep saying that Assad is legitimate and wanted by the majority, based on what? As the last commentator said, most people see this simply as a Sunni Shiite divide. That means the people in the region do too. And there's nothing to point that Assad has the support of the majority or this revolution, uh, re rebellion or revolution. Does the Syrian army pose a, threat to, the the army pose a threat to people in London? Does the Syrian army pose a threat to people in London or in New York? ISIS poses a threat Hezbollah to people does. in London and New York, but the Hezbollah Syrian does. army doesn't. Hezbollah and Iran absolutely oh, do. And We're Hezbollah, about the Syrian and Hezbollah, army. Is part and of Hezbollah that has been fighting the ISIL longer Ridiculous. than anyone else alongside the Syrian army. Gentlemen, we're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll ISIL's continue our excuse. discussion on Syria. Stay with our team. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing Russia's counterterrorism efforts in Syria. Okay, Marcus, I'm going to go back to you in London. I mean, uh, and looking at the rhetoric coming out of Washington, I mean, they're furious, to say the least, about Russia's counterterrorism activities in Syria, which have been invited by the government in Damascus here. And from what I can see coming out of the Pentagon and, and other individuals in the State Department, they are aiming for a proxy war with Russia. Is this a wise move? Go ahead. I, th I think there's every possibility that that's what we could see uh, unfold in the future. What, what we've seen um, in the last week or so is that the Syrian army, in tandem with the Russian military, is starting to make progress on the ground. It's starting to liberate areas from Islamist control. And in doing so, they are coming across um, American uh, weaponry, which has been given to the Islamists. So that is an indication um, that these groups are still receiving um, American weapons. And, of course, we've heard talk as well from various Islamist groups in Syria, in, in particular on the border with Turkey, uh, which has facilitated the arrival in Syria of many Islamist terrorists, that these groups are receiving uh, anti-tank weapons, yeah. uh, anti-tank missiles from America and from their regional allies. So I think we could be in a similar situation to Afghanistan in the 1980s, when the Americans, led by uh, the CIA and people like Charles Wilson, 
um, were arming the Mujahideen, including Osama bin Laden, in their fight um, against the Russians. I, f I think the Ameri I, I don't believe the Americans were actually behind the Islamist uprising in Syria. I think the Americans are opportunists. They've got an objective, yeah. um, and that objective is to overthrow the Syrian government. If you overthrow the Syrian government, you end Russian influence in the Middle East, you end Iranian influence, you get rid of uh, Israel's <laughs> arch enemy. And I, I, I don't believe they have a strategy, but I believe that's their objective. Okay. And even though they failed so far, they will pursue okay, it. But, Can Mar I jump okay. in here? Okay, I jump okay. In here, I would, okay but with, with just the caveat here, I, I think that Marcos is right. But you know, they've tried this scenario over and over again, and it always ends in absolute catastrophe, one country after another. Philippe in Los Angeles, jump in. Yes, I have no disagreement with that, but the Russians are doing the exact same thing. When the last guest said the Americans are supporting Islamist terrorists, that's exactly what the Russians are doing by supporting Iran and Hezbollah. You can't beat a terrorist by using a terrorist and then expect peace to happen. So it's the same Philippe, Philippe, irresponsible Philippe, use of so the you word think, Iran and you think, no, let me ask, no, 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 please, Philippe, let me, please, Philippe, Finish, no, please. you bring I, up, please, a, you please. bring you, this is the second time you brought up this point. Gentlemen, 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 so what, what I think I just it's an important me, point. Philippe, it's well, an important I, think point. It's, I think it's a very odd point because, Philippe, if I could throw it back at you, so you are saying that Hezbollah in Iran should not fight ISIL, right? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying. Well, that's what it sounds like. That's not like. what I'm saying. There are alternatives between the two. I, well, let me explain myself. I think it's very clear this is a pattern in the Middle East generally, but Assad and Iran have been using ISIS to make Assad look good. They've actually bought oil from them and let them rise, and there's been a tacit agreement for years. I think that's offensive to, to ordinary civilians, ordinary an, civilians in Syria who have been murdered by ISIS. Okay, look, it's not a public relations contest I don't think in the Middle Assad, East. <laughs> I don't think Assad supporters should talk about civilian casualties. Assad supporters I'm, I'm, should not I'm be preaching about civilian casualties. I'm a supporter of the Syrian government. I'm a supporter of the Syrian government. Let's, 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 let's make it clear That's here. The same let's thing. Make it, That's let's the be same clear, thing. gentlemen. And our viewers should know, according to UN estimates, half of the people that have died in this horrific conflict have been fighting for the survival of the sovereign state of Syria. And I'm talking yeah. about soldiers. I'm talking about people that work for the state. So let's, you know, not, you know blood is really awful. And Who it's on a lot that? of people. Check United Nations. Look, and a lot of other uh, char charting following the, the death uh, uh, scale going on in Syria. Everybody just says, throws up this number. They never break it down. So there's a lot of tragedy for a lot of people. And I'd point with out, respect, if, I can, well, if I would go, you know, let's keep the equal time here. Uh, Roshan, if I go to you in London, I mean, this is akin mm. to what Russians understand during the great patriotic war against fascism. Everyone in that country is touched by this war. Everybody loses someone. Go ahead. Yeah. Look, I mean, we're not living in a Star Wars movie here. It's not Darth Vader versus uh, Luke Skywalker. Everyone's got some blood on their hands. But as you say, if you break down the figures, the number of dead on both sides, both civilian and military, it's pretty even. Um, now, I mean, uh, your guests there seem to be reading off an Israeli press release. I mean, everything's Iran's fault, isn't it? Everything's the Shia's fault, Hezbollah's fault. You know, if it when rains, it's Russian or whatever, let's throw everything in there. It's all Iran's fault. But How look, convenient. Uh, what I wanted to say something about U.S. strategy, where I might disagree with all of you, is that actually I think U.S. strategy is actually working because their strategy is to bleed the country and get everyone yeah. fighting each true, other. True. I think at the beginning they did want um, Assad to be overthrown, to cut the link from Iran to Hezbollah, to, from Assad, that link, and, or to, to, to bleed everybody, basically. Uh, but now I think they're also concerned about the extremist groups on the other side, what would happen. That could potentially threaten Israel as well, such instability on Israel's borders. And Israel ultimately is their focus here. That's their strategy, to protect Israel. Um, so, you know, ultimately, I think that, um, you know, the That's U.S. That's why they empowered Iran with this nuclear other, deal? Bombing everyone down, a massive attritional war, and therefore Russia should also beware of getting involved of course, in a potential you know, another uh, Afghanistan. Uh, everyone, I don't think that's happen, for the first time, U.S. strategy, the it's working fine. The first time, the first time, the first Russian bomb uh, uh, dropped on Syria, I told everyone, I said, there are risks involved. Obviously, there are. Uh, Marcus, you know, we, we heard a very interesting point here. And I think this is what makes the Americans so angry, is that, that the Russians are hitting terrorist groups, all kinds of different terrorist groups, with people being supported by the Saudis, by the Turks, the Qataris, go on and on and on, okay? Uh, and what really angers the Americans is that the, the Russians are not destroying infrastructure, because that's what they've been doing with their sorties for the last year, is destroying the state known as Syria. Go ahead. 
Yes, because uh, as I said just now, um, the Americans have an objective. It's an objective in the White House, in the State Department, in the CIA, and it continues throughout whichever administration, Republican or Democratic, it is to overthrow uh, the Syrian government, to destroy the Syrian state. And that is an objective uh, that, they, that they will pursue. Um, and the way they're denigrating the Russian attacks um, is, is not surprising. You know, within a few hours of the Russian campaign starting, we heard that uh, civilians were being killed. Now we hear that moderate groups are being attacked. Well, this, this, this idea about moderate groups in Syria, it's a myth. If we go back to 2011, when the Islamist uprising, I emphasize Islamist uprising, began in Syria, the most potent terrorist force was the Free Syrian Army. Now, that's a very sexy name. That's a very Hollywood name. But let's just break it down. The Free Syrian Army was never a unified force. It was a mosaic. It was an eclectic group of different Islamist groups. And how did ISIS emerge in Syria? It emerged because there was a brotherly falling out between all these different Islamist groups, uh, al-Nusra, Islamic Front, Free Syrian Army, and a lot of them, they, they turned to ISIS and they took their uh, weapons, their money, and the training that they had received from the West and regional allies, Saudi Arabia and Turkey, um, to ISIS. So they're, they're, you know, they're, they may be a handful of moderate fighters up and down Syria, um, but there has never been genuinely, truly speaking, moderate groups in Syria. If you, t if you ask the Kurds in the north of the country, who don't exactly have much love for the Syrian government, they will say they prefer the Syrian government over ISIS, over Islamic Front and over other Islamist groups in the country. Okay, Philip, how do you react to that? Because that's the new mantra again. You know, the, the moderate um, uh, theme uh, disappeared um, last year and now it's suddenly reappeared. I mean, are there, in your mind, are there real moderates that should be uh, supported because the Obama administration is looking to dig deeper into its pockets and support uh, groups in, uh, in Syria at the, at the tune of $600 million? That's not pocket change. No, I don't think there are any real, uh, any substantial, substantially important or, or, or capable moderate groups. But nor is Assad moderate, nor is that side moderate. And please let me finish my point this time. Uh, we hear about now uh, the U.S. is doing this for Israel. The U.S. all these ridiculous points that have, uh, some of the uh, commentators have made. The U.S. just empowered Iran no. to the tune of 150 billion dollars, possibly put it, Iran on steroids. It's seen as being on the side of the Shiites. Its opposition to Assad was mostly verbal, <laughs> despite red lines. Uh, and you remember how Putin got in involved with the chemical weapons issue because it didn't want to upset the Iranian uh, conversation. Now they're arming uh, uh, groups that are uh, terrorist groups just like Hezbollah is a terrorist group. It is going to backfire. I am not defending that policy. Uh, but I do think between uh, presenting Russia as this savior against terrorism, and in fact it's, it's, it's going to be aiding Hezbollah, and the, everybody's well, you know, a terrorist on know, the Sunni Philip, side, there Philip, should be some I'd kind like of a middle ground. Out, and I want to know what Russia no, is thinking. It's very important, Philip, to point out that I don't consider Hezbollah a terrorist group. You do. A small number of Western countries in the world consider Hezbollah I think the a terrorist of group. Okay. The, the, the thing, is, is, that, is, that, the of the thing is, is that you know, for, for most people, that most people terrorist? in the region look at Hezbollah as a national resistance movement that defended itself and the country called Lebanon against yeah, Israeli ask, ask aggression the Lebanese, backed by the, the United States. Okay, so I mean, you can. This is not CNN or BBC where you can just banter about these terms. They don't have the same meaning Clearly. here. Clearly, they don't know because this is a, 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 a real I'm not the one who's been using the term terrorist. I'm sorry, with respect. I'm, no, not, I'm not the one been throwing around it. the term terrorist. I think people that the proxies in Syria, they're called terrorists. They're supported by the outside. A lot of them don't even, aren't even Syrian, okay? They're bussed in, flown in, tunneled in from Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries all I over the region. I have no argument okay? with that. They're called terrorists. I told you I That's agree. What they are. I, I, I'm okay with that. Okay. So is Hezbollah. It's the definition of okay. terrorist, the group Alrighty. that is okay. non-state so that have attacks your issues civilians. With Hezbollah. We're, we're talking for about saving reason, a the state group, of Syria. It's Islamist. Okay, Marcus, you want to jump in real quick? Correct. You don't do that yeah, by I mean, empowering you know, can, can, can I? I mean, can I say uh, the, the gentleman's obsession uh, with Hezbollah um, is not helpful? Look, you know, the, the West led by America. The, the West led by America. Uh, gave birth to Al Qaeda. Israel's actions in the Lebanon gave birth to Hezbollah. It, you know, it's human nature, action, reaction. With the way Israel acts in the region, you are going to I get a response. I thought it was Russia's actions in Afghanistan that. that gave birth to Al Qaeda. Okay. Actually. I'm going to jump in here, Russia. Well, I think you're fine. I think you're fine. Russia's going to Russia's gonna get a response. I want to give our second guest. Russia's going to get a response. That's what I'm word. saying. Fair time. Go ahead.
Russian, go ahead. Yeah, just, just really three quick points. I mean, you know, uh, despite what our guest says, there is a strategic alliance between the U.S. and Israel for years. They, they fund them to billions. They arm, arm them to the tune of billions. We all know that. It's established fact. There is no strategic alliance between Iran and the U.S. Like That's Syrian pure Assad. conspiracy theory. Iran forced, Iran forced the U.S. to the table. The U.S. tried everything to bomb Iran, to destroy economically, Iran it failed, forced the US. and it was forced to make a deal. My final point is that um, ultimately no side can win this war. You know, uh, the Iranians, the Russians, the Americans, the Saudis, no that side was can my win this point. war. A political solution needs to be imposed uh, before the whole region burns. Okay, on that point, gentlemen, we've run out of time. Many thanks to Which my guests one? in London and in Los Angeles, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. Thank you. See you next time, and remember, cross stop rules.